Selections from Longfellow Poems for Intermediate Grade By Henry Wadsworth Longfellow Read for LibriVox.org By Bruce Kachuk The Village Blacksmith Under a spreading chestnut tree The village smithy stands The smith, a mighty man, is he With large and sinewy hands and the muscles of his brawny arms are strong as iron bands his hair is crisp and black and long his face is like the tan his brow is wet with honest sweat he earns whate'er he can and looks the whole world in the face for he owes not any man week in week out from morn to night you can hear his bellows blow you can hear him swing his heavy sledge with measured beat and slow like a sexton ringing the village bell when the evening sun is low and children coming home from school look in at the open door they love to see the flaming forge and hear the bellows roar and catch the burning sparks that fly like chaff from a threshing floor he goes on sunday to the church and sits among his boys he hears the parson pray and preach he hears his daughter's voice singing in the village choir and it makes his heart rejoice it sounds to him like her mother's voice singing in paradise he needs must think of her once more how in the grave she lies and with his hard rough hand he wipes a tear out of his eyes toiling rejoicing sorrowing onward through life he goes each morning sees some task begin each evening sees its close something attempted something done has earned a night's repose thanks thanks to thee my worthy friend for the lesson thou hast taught thus at the flaming forge of life our fortunes must be wrought thus on its sounding anvil shaped each burning deed and thought end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Old Clock on the Stairs by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow Read for LibriVox.org Somewhat back from the village street Stands the old-fashioned country seat Across its antique portico Tall poplar trees their shadows throw And from its station in the hall An ancient timepiece says to all forever never never forever halfway up the stairs it stands and points and beckons with its hands from its case of massive oak like a monk who under his cloak crosses himself and sighs alas with sorrowful voice to all who pass forever never never forever by day its voice is low and light but in the silent dead of night distinct as a passing footsteps fall it echoes along the vacant hall along the ceiling along the floor and seems to say at each chamber door forever never never forever through days of sorrow and of mirth through days of death and days of birth through every swift vicissitude of changeful time unchanged it has stood and as if like god it all things saw it calmly repeats those words of awe forever never never forever in that mansion used to be free-hearted hospitality his great fires up the chimney roared 
the stranger feasted at his board but like the skeleton at the feast that warning timepiece never ceased forever never never forever their groups of merry children played their youths and maidens dreaming strayed o precious hours o golden prime and affluence of love and time even as a miser counts his gold those hours the ancient timepiece told forever never never forever from that chamber clothed in white the bride came forth on her wedding night there in that silent room below the dead lay in his shroud of snow and in the hush that followed the prayer was heard that old clock on the stair forever never never forever all are scattered now and fled some are married some are dead and when i ask with throbs of pain ah when shall they all meet again as in the days long since gone by the ancient timepiece makes reply forever never never forever never here forever there where all parting pain and care and death and time shall disappear forever there but never here the horloge of eternity saith this incessantly forever never never forever end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Arrow and the Song by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow Read for LibriVox.org I shot an arrow into the air, It fell to earth I knew not where, For so swiftly it flew, The sight could not follow it in its flight. I breathed a song into the air, It fell to earth I knew not where, for who has sight so keen and strong that it can follow the flight of song? Long, long afterward, in an oak, I found the arrow still unbroke, and the song, from beginning to end, I found again in the heart of a friend. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. THE OPEN WINDOW by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow Read for LibriVox.org The old house by the lindens stood silent in the shade, And on the graveled pathway the light and shadow played. I saw the nursery windows wide open to the air, But the faces of the children, they were no longer there. The large Newfoundland house dog was standing by the door. He looked for his little playmates who would return no more. They walked not under the lindens, they played not in the hall. But shadow and silence and sadness were hanging over all. The birds sang in the branches with sweet, familiar tone. But the voices of the children will be heard in dreams alone. And the boy that walked beside me, he could not understand why closer in mine, ah, closer, I pressed his warm, soft hand. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Day is Done by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow Read for LibriVox.org The day is done, and the darkness falls from the wings of night, 
as a feather is wafted downward from an eagle in his flight i see the lights of the village gleam through the rain and the mist and a feeling of sadness comes o'er me that my soul cannot resist a feeling of sadness and longing that is not akin to pain and resembles sorrow only as the mist resembles the rain come read to me some poem some simple and heartfelt lay that shall soothe this restless feeling and banish the thoughts of day not from the grand old masters not from the bards sublime whose distant footsteps echo through the corridors of time for like strains of martial music their mighty thoughts suggest life's endless toil and endeavor and to-night i long for rest read from some humbler poet whose songs gushed from his heart as showers from the clouds of summer or tears from the eyelids start who through long days of labor and nights devoid of ease still heard in his soul the music of wonderful melodies such songs have power to quiet the restless pulse of care and come like the benediction that follows after prayer then read from the treasured volume the poem of thy choice and lend to the rhyme of the poet the beauty of thy voice and the night shall be filled with music and the cares that infest the day shall fold their tents like the arabs and as silently steal away end of poem this recording is in the public domain rain in summer by henry wadsworth longfellow read for LibriVox.org. how beautiful is the rain after the dust and heat in the broad and fiery street in the narrow lane how beautiful is the rain how it clatters upon the roofs like the tramp of hoofs how it gushes and struggles out from the throat of the overflowing spout across the window pane it pours and pours and swift and wide with a muddy tide like a river down the gutter roars the rain the welcome rain the sick man from his chamber looks at the twisted brooks he can feel the cool breath of each little pool his fevered brain grows calm again and he breathes a blessing on the rain from the neighboring school come the boys with more than their wonted noise and commotion and down the wet streets sail their mimic fleets till the treacherous pool engulfs them in its whirling and turbulent ocean in the country on every side where far and wide like a leopard's tawny and spotted hide stretches the plain to the dry grass and the drier grain how welcome is the rain in the furrowed land the toilsome and patient oxen stand lifting the yoke encumbered head with their dilated nostrils spread they silently inhale the clover scented gale and the vapors that arise from the well watered and smoking soil for this rest in the furrow after toil their large and lustrous eyes seem to thank the lord more than man's spoken word near at hand from under the sheltering trees the farmer sees his pastures 
and his fields of grain as they bend their tops to the numberless beating drops of the incessant rain he counts it as no sin that he sees therein only his own thrift and gain these and far more than these the poet sees he can behold aquarius old walking the fenceless fields of air and from each ample fold of the clouds about him rolled scattering everywhere the showery rain as the farmer scatters his grain he can behold things manifold that have not yet been wholly told have not been wholly sung nor said for his thought which never stops follows the water drops down to the graves of the dead down through chasms and gulfs profound to the dreary fountain head of lakes and rivers underground and sees them when the rain is done on the bridge of colors seven climbing up once more to heaven opposite the setting sun thus the seer with vision clear sees forms appear and disappear in the perpetual round of strange mysterious change from birth to death from death to birth from earth to heaven from heaven to earth till glimpses more sublime of things unseen before unto his wandering eyes reveal the universe as an immeasurable wheel turning forevermore in the rapid and rushing river of time end of poem this recording is in the public domain the reaper and the flowers by henry wadsworth longfellow read for LibriVox.org. there is a reaper whose name is death and with his sickle keen he reaps the bearded grain at a breath and the flowers that grow between shall i have naught that is fair saith he have naught but the bearded grain though the breath of these flowers is sweet to me i will give them all back again he gazed at the flowers with tearful eyes he kissed their drooping leaves it was for the lord of paradise he bound them in his sheaves my lord has need of these flowerets gay the reaper said and smiled dear tokens of the earth are they where he was once a child they shall all bloom in fields of light transplanted by my care and saints upon their garments white these sacred blossoms wear and the mother gave in tears and pain the flowers she most did love she knew she should find them all again in the fields of light above oh not in cruelty not in wrath the reaper came that day twas an angel visited the green earth and took the flowers away end of poem this recording is in the public domain afternoon in february by henry wadsworth longfellow read for librivox dot org the day is ending the night is descending the marsh is frozen the river dead through clouds like ashes the red sun flashes on village windows that glimmer red the snow recommences the buried fences mark no longer the road or the plain while through the meadows like fearful shadows slowly passes a funeral train 
the bell is pealing and every feeling within me responds to the dismal knell shadows are trailing my heart is bewailing and tolling within like a funeral bell end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Rainy Day by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow Read for LibriVox.org The day is cold and dark and dreary It rains and the wind is never weary The vine still clings to the mouldering wall But at every gust the dead leaves fall And the day is dark and dreary my life is cold and dark and dreary it rains and the wind is never weary my thoughts still cling to the mouldering past but the hopes of youth fall thick in the blast and the days are dark and dreary be still sad heart and cease repining behind the clouds is the sun still shining thy fate is the common fate of all into each life some rain must fall some days must be dark and dreary end of poem this recording is in the public domain excelsior by henry wadsworth longfellow Read for LibriVox.org The shades of night were falling fast As through an alpine village passed A youth who bore, mid snow and ice, A banner with the strange device, Excelsior. His brow was sad, his eye beneath Flashed like a falchion from its sheath, And like a silver clarion rung The accents of that unknown tongue excelsior in happy homes he saw the light of household fires gleam warm and bright above the spectral glaciers shone and from his lips escaped a groan excelsior try not the pass the old man said dark lowers the tempest overhead the roaring torrent is deep and wide and loud the clarion voice replied excelsior o oh, stay the maiden said and rest thy weary head upon this breast a tear stood in his bright blue eye but still he answered with a sigh excelsior beware the pine tree's withered branch beware the awful avalanche this was the peasant's last good night a voice replied far up the height excelsior at break of day as heavenward the pious monks of saint bernard uttered the oft repeated prayer a voice cried through the startled air excelsior a traveller by the faithful hound half buried in the snow was found still grasping in his hand of ice that banner with the strange device excelsior there in the twilight cold and grey lifeless but beautiful he lay and from the sky serene and far a voice fell like a falling star excelsior end of poem this recording is in the public domain the wreck of the hesperus by henry wadsworth longfellow read for LibriVox.org. it was the schooner hesperus that sailed the wintry sea and the skipper had taken his little daughter to bear him company blue were her eyes as the fairy flax her cheeks like the dawn of day 
and her bosom white as the hawthorn buds that ope in the month of may the skipper he stood beside the helm his pipe was in his mouth and he watched how the veering flaw did blow the smoke now west now south then up and spake an old sailor had sailed the spanish main i pray thee put into yonder port for i fear a hurricane last night the moon had a golden ring and to-night no moon we see the skipper he blew a whiff from his pipe and a scornful laugh laughed he colder and colder blew the wind a gale from the northeast the snow fell hissing in the brine and the billows frothed like yeast down came the storm and smote amain the vessel in its strength she shuddered and paused like a frighted steed then leaped her cable's length come hither come hither my little daughter and do not tremble so for i can weather the roughest gale that ever wind did blow he wrapped her warm in his seaman's coat against the stinging blast he cut a rope from a broken spar and bound her to the mast o oh, father i hear the church bells ring o oh, say what may it be tis a fog bell on a rock-bound coast and he steered for the open sea o oh, father i hear the sound of guns o oh, say what may it be some ship in distress that cannot live in such an angry sea o oh, father i see a gleaming light o oh, say what may it be but the father answered never a word a frozen corpse was he lashed to the helm all stiff and stark with his face turned to the skies the lantern gleamed through the gleaming snow on his fixed and glassy eyes then the maiden clasped her hands and prayed that saved she might be and she thought of christ who stilled the wave on the lake of galilee and fast through the midnight dark and drear through the whistling sleet and snow like a sheeted ghost the vessel swept towards the reef of norman's woe and ever the fitful gusts between a sound came from the land it was the sound of the trampling surf on the rocks and the hard sea sand the breakers were right beneath her bows she drifted a dreary wreck and a whooping billow swept the crew like icicles from her deck she struck where the white and fleecy waves looked soft as carded wool but the cruel rocks they gored her side like the horns of an angry bull her rattling shrouds all sheathed in ice with the masts went by the board like a vessel of glass she stove and sank ho ho the breakers roared at daybreak on the bleak sea beach a fisherman stood aghast to see the form of a maiden fair lashed close to a drifting mast the salt sea was frozen on her breast the salt tears in her eyes and he saw her hair like the brown seaweed on the billows fall and rise such was the wreck of the hesperus in the midnight and the snow christ save us all from a death like this on the reef of norman's woe end of poem this recording is in the public domain Paul Revere's Ride by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow Read for LibriVox.org 
listen my children and you shall hear of the midnight ride of paul revere on the eighteenth of april in seventy five hardly a man is now alive who remembers that famous day and year he said to his friend if the british march by land or sea from the town to-night hang a lantern aloft in the belfry arch of the north church tower as a signal light one if by land and two if by sea and i on the opposite shore will be ready to ride and spread the alarm through every middlesex village and farm for the country folk to be up and to arm then he said good night and with muffled oar silently rowed to the charlestown shore just as the moon rose over the bay where swinging wide at her moorings lay the somerset british man-of-war a phantom ship with each mast and spar across the moon like a prison bar and a huge black hulk that was magnified by its own reflection in the tide meanwhile his friend through alley and street wanders and watches with eager ears till in the silence around him he hears the muster of men at the barrack door the sound of arms and the tramp of feet and the measured tread of the grenadiers marching down to their boats on the shore then he climbed to the tower of the church up the wooden stairs with stealthy tread to the belfry chamber overhead and startled the pigeons from their perch on the sombre rafters that round him made masses and moving shapes of shade up the light ladder slender and tall to the highest window in the wall where he paused to listen and look down a moment on the roofs of the town and the moonlight flowing over all meanwhile impatient to mount and ride booted and spurred with a heavy stride on the opposite shore walked paul revere now he patted his horse's side now gazed at the landscape far and near then impetuous stamped the earth and turned and tightened his saddle girth but mostly he watched with eager search the belfry tower of the old north church as it rose above the graves on the hill lonely and spectral and sombre and still and lo as he looks on the belfry's height a glimmer and then a gleam of light he springs to the saddle the bridle he turns but lingers and gazes till full on his sight a second lamp in the belfry burns a hurry of hoofs in a village street a shape in the moonlight a bulk in the dark and beneath from the pebbles in passing a spark struck out by a steed that flies fearless and fleet that was all and yet through the gloom and the light the fate of a nation was riding that night it was twelve by the village clock when he crossed the bridge into medford town he heard the crowing of the cock and the barking of the farmer's dog and felt the damp of the river fog that rises after the sun goes down it was one by the village clock when he rode into lexington he saw the gilded weathercock swim in the moonlight as he passed and the meeting-house windows blank and bare gaze at him with a spectral glare as if they already stood aghast at the bloody work they would look upon it was two by the village clock when he came to the bridge in concord town he heard the bleating of the flock and the twitter of the birds among the trees and felt the breath of the morning breeze blowing over the meadows brown so through the night rode paul revere and so through the night went his cry of alarm to every middlesex village and farm 
a cry of defiance and not of fear a voice in the darkness a knock at the door and a word that shall echo forevermore for born on the night wind of the past through all our history to the last in the hour of darkness and peril and need the people will waken and listen to hear the hurrying hoofbeats of that steed and the midnight message of paul revere end of poem this recording is in the public domain end of selections from longfellow poems for intermediate grade by henry wadsworth longfellow